is the season to get your neighbors all jealous of the curb appeal that you have from your beautiful flower beds or just your beds out front of your house. But how do you do that? What do you do? Well, you could check in with an expert and we happen to have one here today. Brandon from Gelderlands Landscape Design. Good to see you again, Brandon. How are you, Tim? What's going on? Good How busy you. are you these days? Oh, we're really busy. Right? <laughs> even, with the, even with the coalish weather, people are still uh, yeah. heart set on uh, getting their beds all ready to go? Yeah, it's been like that since January, since we didn't have too much snow, so. Because you guys do a lot of like the design aspect too. So looking at like even let's say this house here, which is, it's a beautiful place, right? Yeah, so how would, really how, nice. how would you assess even the beds here, Brandon? Uh, right now, what I'd recommend is kind of extending the garden bed out so cutting about 12 inches into the grass and allowing for some perennials or annuals to be planted so even can, you've start you've started doing that a little bit so we started a little bit here what we can do is um, if you want to help here putting some mulch in okay and we're okay with mulch like this is yeah you can use uh, triple mitts or mulch this is actually pine bark mulch I recommend using pine bark, cedar, or hemlock, because if you look at the chunks of it, it's actually small and it's supposed to break down. And you can put this on approximately three to four inches thick. It helps with the weed situation. And Because um, people like easy, right? Like to get to, to get their beds set and ready to go, and then you really don't have to go into them that much throughout the summer, because That's you're right. busy throughout the summer doing so much stuff. That's very true. And if you look at this mulch too, there's actually a leaf in it, and it blends in because of the color of the right. bark, right? Do you like black mulch? I do not like black mulch because as soon as you put the black mulch down, if any new buds or anything falls onto the ground like this, you can notice it, it right really, away. It really stands out, so you want something that really blends in. So what you do is take the garden bed out about 12 inches. You can go a little bit further if you'd like. So that's, a, that's allowing to, some more things to grow out because these are going to be coming out, right? Yeah, you need these plants to be able to grow out a little bit further. And then even with these shrubs here? With these shrubs here too, so. And you have a, a shovel planted here. I'm yeah. assuming this is, where, you this, work, this, is, this is where this is where we go to work. All right, so just kind of digging down and, and fishing it out like that. Yep, and okay. that's allowing space to uh, have some annuals planted. And easy, just kind of. Let me get this bucket You don't even have here. to have big chunks out like that. So would you plant in anything here or would this actually just grow out? This will grow out slowly and I would actually plant some annuals along there and it'll give you some nice color. Okay. Well, we're gonna be hanging out here all morning. We, uh, we're tackling the front. We're gonna take a look at the roof because now's the time to uh, kind of investigate if there's any issues on the roof. We're gonna talk planters and we're also gonna take Brandon to the, uh, the backyard here at this uh, spot in Burlington to kind of assess what we need to, uh, to pull and get ready for the, uh, the spring and summer season when we return with Gelderland's Landscape Design on Morning Life. All right, back to her. Okay, let's get this in here. And we're here with Jeff Monty from uh, Desi's Roofing. And before you're emailing us and saying, aren't those guys supposed to be wearing harnesses? Why don't we have to wear a harness on this roof, Jeff? Because the eave trough is less than 10 feet from the ground and the ministry says you don't need to wear a harness. Anything over 10, we would have to wear a harness. And if we move up to the second level, we have to have harnesses on. Okay. Um, so let's get into what are people wanting to check at this time of the season to make sure their roof is okay? The first thing you should look for is any cracked or broken or missing shingles up on the roof. Also, you should look to see that there's no damage from squirrels, raccoons, and such. Okay, we'll get to that one in a second. What's this roof look like? How, how are we looking here? This is a, a newer roof. It's probably only about six or seven years old. This is a, a GAF Timberline shingle that it has a 50 year manufacturer's warranty. We're at 50 years 50 now. 50 years and it's non-prorated warranty, which means it's 100% covered for 50 years. They're much better, they're fiberglass shingles. They last a lot longer, they don't curl, they don't blow off because they have 110 mile per hour wind rating. So even all those winds that we had a couple weeks back, that would not We only had a few instances on high wind areas where big fields, that they blew off. Other than that, no. It's the old style shingles that are three tabs that were disappearing like crazy. Let's get back to the, the squirrels and the, and the raccoons. And a lot of the time they're getting in through the vents. Through the vents. Okay, so this is an example here because this is a plastic vent. Yes, this is plastic. So what happened was the squirrel chewed through here. The people called the um, wildlife folks. They came and put a screen over. The only thing they didn't do was put it over the top. The squirrel came back, chewed, got in their attic and it cost them thousands of dollars to get the squirrels out. Us at Desi's Roofing, we use a steel vent. 
critters can't get in these things. They're actually bulletproof to animals. Right, so nothing can get in there. Yep, and we use them on every So even every here, this is, this is plastic here, so that's they, could plastic. Chew, they could chew through that. So Definitely. That's, that almost needs to be replaced into a, to steel. Yep. Uh, one thing I also want to show off, on this roof too, they have covered over top of the eaves. Are you seeing that a lot more? Yeah, a lot more. We install quite a bit of this each year. This one is a manufacturer called Alurex. Um, we install quite a bit of it, thousands of feet. It just keeps all the debris out of your eaves troughs so that the debris doesn't flow down and clog your down pipes and cause backups and water inside. you don't have to be climbing inside. all the way up here to be cleaning them out. That's right. And right? It's, it's, it's a great feature now for, for roofing. You guys ready for the season? Oh, we're more than ready. Right, because it's, it hasn't been the best thus far with we, all the rain and the cold weather. We've had so much rain and we can't get any work done when it's rainy. Right. So. Okay. Well, uh, Desi's, uh, Desi's Roofing in Burlington. Uh, nice meeting you, Jeff. Thanks a lot Thank for you. some tips. We're going to no continue problem. getting you ready for the spring and summer season here in Burlington on Morning Live. So we've been focusing on flower beds in your garden, but we can't forget about your planters. So we got the expert in, Jennifer from Centro Garden in uh, in Burlington to help us out once again. Great That's seeing right. you, Jennifer. Yes, you too. Okay, so this is, a, first off, this is a great planter, old rustic planter. It is. That's right. A lot of us have those kicking around. Right, and you can use whatever, whatever. Um, can you put perennials, annuals in your planters? You can put whatever you want. Are there, rule, of, are there rules? There's no rules. A lot of people are mixing tropical flowers, annuals, perennials, even some succulents in your planters okay. now. What's the first thing we put in? This is called a canna lily. Okay. Gives you a nice leaf color. It's going to be the height in your planter and it's going to come up with a little orange flower yet. So you put always the height at the back? Yeah, we okay. do. Mm -hmm. Okay, what would we put in next? Then we're going to put in sort of a mid-range plant. So we have this lovely grass here. This is called fountain grass. This is a variety called fireworks. It's got right. the nice pink color. We're going to tuck it in beside this canna tuck towards the back. The great thing about grass, there's so many different colors, right? There are so many different colors. You have the colors. nice yep. red, you can get green, you can get black. That's right. And would, this that, grow, would this grow tall too? It will grow not much taller, but towards the fall it'll get the grass plumes coming up on it. When we're putting this in, is this, mm -hmm. is this good for all summer long? These are great plants. Very hardy, will last you all summer. We'll not need to replant this until your fall months until, come until, along. Until the fall comes yeah. along. If you're doing this now though, you would have to start bringing them inside at night because it is you too cold, You would. Right? It still seems to be a risk of frost here for a few nights. Right. So you just want to watch the weather. You could pop it in your garage for night if you need to. Okay, so you're bringing it in and out. Bringing it in and out right now. Next up is? Next up, we're going to put um, this purple guy in. We're going to tuck him over in this corner. This is called fan flower. Okay. Very tough plant. With he's going to kind of hang down hang a bit down, down okay. the front and give you some purple flowers. Then we've got a lovely pink ivy geranium. That'll help contrast with the pink over here. We're pulling our colors together, so that would be tucked in the other side. Because for me, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know colors or what plants to put together. Like, yeah. Is so, there... Well, we, we like to keep it to a um, couple colors in the same planter. So not too many, Not too right? crazy, yeah. Okay. So that it kind of looks like it matches. And then uh, here's another trailer that's going to come down the front. This is called Creeping Jenny. Oh, I do know and that. And it's going to hang over too. Again, so you have both coming down at the front. Two hanging over. You got the lime green to pull in with this lime green. We've got some pinks mixing. So and would you do would you do multiple together. of these or would you do individual original ones? Yeah, you can do two if you're right. going on the other side of the door. If you just have a spot for one, this yeah. is a good standalone as well. And again, because there's no rules. You can there do whatever you no want. There's no rules, but that's if you, right. But if you wanted to learn more, you guys do have some workshops. Exactly we what we did right here. That's right. Our right. workshop season is coming up. Starts Tuesday night and uh, you can phone the store for more details. Right on. Central Garden in Burlington, right on Branch Street. Great seeing you again, Jennifer. Thank you. Back with more here in Burlington, getting you set. Your gardens and your planters and your beds all set for the summer season. Um, so to get this house all primed up and ready to go to make all the neighbors jealous, we started in the front yard working on the beds. We took a look at the roof to just make sure it's uh, A-OK -okay after the winter. And now you find us in the backyard. <laughs> and how nice is this backyard with the pool and everything? And there's a lot of great growth here. But we just kind of want to make some changes a little bit to see what uh, we can do better. And we brought Brandon from uh, Gelderlands Landscape Design here to, uh, we're going to start here in the corner with these, uh, with these two trees here, Brandon. So this tree right here should be cut right back. Uh, early spring's a good time to do it. So I, it's better to do it in the spring rather than the fall? Well, it depends on the plant. Right. Um, this plant definitely needs a hard pruning. This plant right here is kind of, they're growing together. So this one needs to be transplanted. The easiest way to transplant it is to 
cut the roots. So you're pruning the root system. Prune it once in the spring, you can do it in the fall and then move it in the fall or early spring. So if you're doing that now, you probably couldn't move it until next spring. Next spring, you need to prune the roots first because they've established there. So move that tree right here. Because this needs some space in the middle. Nice. Yeah. And you can move this one right here over a little bit. Right. And I would introduce some low plants here to fill the garden. So some nice fill there. Okay. What type of plants? I would probably put some junipers and then yeah. at the front of the garden you could put some color. You could do annuals or flowering perennials. This tree right here is leaning over. It's growing towards the sun. So, so there's because the shade from this bigger tree is trying to escape the shade and try to go for the sun. It is. So but there is a way we can just so by pulling gently it back. pull on it and then you can pack this side. Pack that side. Right. And then I would recommend putting a stake here tying it off with a hose around it, or you can get the, from the nursery, the burlap one, so it breaks off eventually, and have the tree straight, leave it on for about a year. So that's gonna take a year, and it will grow back to? Possibly. Possibly. You do need to prune it. And this tree over here, the same thing's same happening. Type of, same type of thing, where it's, again, growing towards the, uh, growing it towards the sun. It has a stake, but the stake isn't strong enough now. Okay. This is nice winter and just grass here. But this should be cut back. So we need to cut these grasses back. And again, you want to do that in the spring rather than the fall? I now would do it in the that. spring because this gives nice four season interest. So where would we cut this? So cut it just above the new growth. So you see the green in there, so just cutting it like... Yeah. Oh, that. it's falling all over the place. Like that. So this allows all of that green growth there you go. to start coming through. You can cut it a little bit lower if you'd like. You make sure your cutters are grow off. Make, make sure your cutters are a little sharper than than, than, yeah. than those ones too. Uh, okay, so we're running out of time. Lastly, quickly, just over here is you can start. What are these here? These are sedums. Okay. So this is the winter interest also too. You got the new plant growing up. Right. So you can just break these off. Right. Should be pulling these out. Yeah, yeah you can pull them out. Okay. Uh, Gelderlands uh, landscape design. This is what you guys do. Right, and you get everybody ready for the uh, for the summer season. Yeah, make sure you plan properly too. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you. Good seeing you again, Brandon. We will uh, we'll see you in the fall. Yeah, you too, Tim. Thanks to France too for uh, loaning us her house. Yes. Thank everybody you, in the pool. <laughs> 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 <laughs>